this 76ers Nets matchup, we got a true taste of a playoff atmosphere. The booze, the electricity, the trash talk. They're going back and forth. They're going back and forth. We've seen this before in the previous matchups this year with Embiid and KD having words. And I'm here for it. I'm loving it. If the playoffs started today, the Brooklyn Nets would be forced to play in the playing tournament. Does that still sound crazy to anybody else? On top of that, there's a chance that the Nets and 76ers could play in the first round. Imagine being either of these teams playing a conference finals matchup in round one. This is a reminder that nobody needs, but the Nets started this season with Kyrie Irving, James Harden, and Kevin Durant. Three insanely gifted scorers who are among the best in the league at what they do. Making it to the NBA is something that's hard in itself. To be among the best at anything in the NBA is something that puts you on a completely different level. You guys know how I feel about what ifs, but sometimes I can't help but wonder what could have been if everything had broken right. I try to avoid thinking about missed opportunities because sometimes it leads to regret. Do you guys think that either side regrets the way that anything played out? Look at Ben Simmons. It seems like he couldn't be happier. And on the other side of things, James Harden, Joel Embiid, and Tyrese Maxey have been looking like an unstoppable force until they played Brooklyn. What's terrifying for the 76ers is that Ben Simmons hasn't even logged a minute this season. The Brooklyn Nets are probably in their head thinking something like, this isn't even my final form yet. Now we're going to continue to talk 76ers and Nets, but first, let's get a word from our sponsor. I want to give a major shout out to Fetch Rewards for sponsoring today's content. For those of you that don't know what Fetch Rewards is, it's basically a super easy to use free app that gets you free rewards on basically anything that you buy. All you have to do is scan any receipt or e-receipt and you'll earn points from wherever you were shopping. You then redeem those points for hundreds of rewards. I'm talking Amazon, Visa gift cards, you name it, Fetch has it. To be honest with you guys, the whole process is so easy that it's a little ridiculous. Just take a few pictures, click submit, and hey, I, I told you guys it was easy, right? One of the things that I love so much about Fetch is how easy it is to use your e-receipts. All you have to do is click the e-receipts button and it'll check your recent purchases. Fetch is not picky at all about receipts. There are so many rewards to choose from, and you can earn points from anywhere. Check out the link in the description below and get 3,000 free points whenever you scan your first receipt. Don't mind me guys, I'm just about to spend my free points. No big deal, right? Be sure to download the app now and use code GETLIKECOOP before it's too late. I want to give a major shout out to Fetch for making today's content possible. A lot of times, it can be tough to read feelings in the NBA. It feels like having a great poker face comes with the position. While NBA players can be hard to read, it was not hard to read how these two teams felt about each other. Let's call it competitive nature. I know that there are some people out there that would question the competitive nature of Kevin Durant. Look, I get it. Some people didn't like the teaming up. They don't like some of KD's antics. But when we're talking basketball, when we're strictly talking basketball, in my opinion, Kevin Durant is the ultimate competitor. On the court, he leaves it all on the line. We're talking about somebody that was willing to play every single minute of a playoff game. Might I remind you that playoff basketball is not regular hoop. It's much more physical. It's much more intense. On the other side of things, people have started to question the competitive nature of Ben Simmons. They questioned what his return to Philadelphia would look like. They questioned if the guy would even come to the arena. March 8th, Kevin Durant spoke up about a potential return to Philadelphia for Ben Simmons. He said that this guy's making $40 million a year. You can take that for a couple of hours. I'm sure Ben has that approach. He also said that I think part of the experience of coming to an NBA game is to heckle. Some people don't even enjoy basketball. They just deflect onto other people. So it's easy to kind of get that release at a basketball game. Ben understands that. Throughout the ups and downs of this whole Ben Simmons thing, Kevin Durant has been somewhat of a steady constant. While Kevin Durant has been dropping some gems relative to this whole situation, Danny Green has stepped up to air the situation out. And in my opinion, it couldn't come at a weirder time. According to Danny Green, 
Ben Simmons changed his number while still in Philadelphia. To quote Green, I reached out on a personal level and said, look, man, we can turn this thing around. He also said that players in the locker room would openly discuss who they would trade Ben Simmons for. That's weird to me because there was always the potential that some players in that locker room would be included in a potential Ben Simmons trade. Danny Green also said that the 76ers circled this game on their calendar. For anybody that missed the game, it was a blowout for virtually the entire game. The Nets won 129 to 100, and let's just say that they made their presence felt for the entire game. While there's been a lot of talk about the Nets' demise, I feel like there hasn't been enough talk about what this team is capable of. Not even a week ago, Kyrie Irving dropped 50 points on 19 shots. He had a 101.3 true shooting percentage. Kyrie's ability to do things like this is why I think Ben Simmons is a great fit in Brooklyn. Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant put the ball in the basket with some of the best in the game. Regardless of what kind of numbers that Ben Simmons puts up, he's going to have a presence in Brooklyn. And so is Seth Curry, and so is Andre Drummond. While these two players are already making their presence felt in Brooklyn, they were also making their presence felt in Philadelphia. When the Philadelphia 76ers traded for James Harden, they lost some key rotation pieces. A lot of people don't know this, but Seth Curry has one of the highest three-point percentages of all time. He's right behind Steve Kerr, Hubert Davis, and Joe Harris. He is currently fourth all time for three point percentage at 43.8%. The Nets have some guys on their roster who can flat out shoot the lights out of the basketball. And when the playoffs come around, you can bet that that spacing is going to matter, especially when you have two scorers as dynamic as Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant. During the broadcast of this game, Reggie Miller brought up that the consistency of some of the 76ers shooters could turn into a problem. In the comments below, I want to know if you guys think that this is true. Keep in mind that he wasn't referring to the consistency of James Harden, Tyrese Maxey, or Joel Embiid. I know that 76er fans are going to hate me for this, but I really don't think that they should. I love Harden, I love Joel Embiid, and I like the intensity that their crowd brings to every game. I just think it's comical that so many people thought that this was going to be a revenge game when Ben Simmons didn't even play. And by the way, they went on to get demolished. Even though the regular season is coming to an end, this game is not necessarily a cause for an overreaction because at the end of the day, it's still the regular season. The Brooklyn Nets who are currently sitting inside the playing tournament have all of the reason to one out. At least in my opinion, the difference between being a 7th or 8th seed in the playing tournament and being a ninth or 10th seed is gigantic. I still can't believe that Danny Green said that this game was circled. If this game was circled and this was actually the 76ers best effort, then I would definitely be worried. 76er fans, I'm genuinely curious to know how you guys are feeling after this game. How confident are you going into the postseason? Do you think that Joel Embiid and James Harden have everything that it takes to bring home a championship? In my opinion, a game like this shows the value of James Harden. I know that may sound like a bit of a contradiction because he started one of 12, but when the playoffs start, you're going to need this guy to be on and cooking. James Harden finished this game with 11 points on three of 17 shooting. Meanwhile, Seth Curry had 24, Kyrie had 22, Kevin Durant had 25. Did you guys see Kyrie's defense on Harden? That's championship caliber stuff. I mean, he already knew we, we had his back, but it just felt good to quiet all of them down midway through the game. And, you know, it was very quiet towards the end. We ain't hear no more Ben Simmons, ben Simmons chants from, from the Sixers fans. There was more Nets fans in here than anything. Did I mention that Seth Curry only missed four shots? Here's to hoping that Tobias Harris and the rest of the 76ers step up to the challenge of setting the tone going forward. After all, it's better that something like this happens now instead of in the playoffs when everything's on the line. Clicking the video on the screen right now is a great way to support this channel. I'm Gil Like Coop bringing you guys the scoop until our next upload.